We're going camping. You just can't get past this, can you? No, we're going camping. Welcome to the Todd and Aaron Daily First time of the year. Way. We're going camping. Can I suggest one quick thing? Look, look. How oh, darling are those? You need these. And the, f the fact is we're taking our old trailer out of 69 no Nomad. And we're taking it out for the first time. And we've stripped everything out of it. And now... Salt and pepper shakers going back It in. just feels like home again, doesn't it, honey? Spatula. Yeah. We have an extra spatula. That's Maybe going in. And then Zoe got this, which is really cool. That won't get annoying at Not all. Not the slightest. I can, yeah, yeah, just picture that. It's a great flashlight. So, no, I'm just very, very excited. You are really this. excited. I, I am. No I mean, why. there's a lot on, you know, on the line now. I'm Mr. Prepared. Mr. Overprepared, Lewis and Clark had nothing on me, uh, and we're going to go and go We've camping. never gone hungry, that's for sure. This is true. So we're going camping. I'm really excited about it. As a matter of fact, this will show you how excited I am. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Hey, What Are You Doing in My Kitchen? My name's Todd. Evidently, uh, something was lackluster about my uh, cooking. Episode 12 of Things You Can Cook on a Stick evidently wasn't impressed enough. Now I'll show you what I made. I made this. I made this, which are octopus tentacles to throw on the grill. A lot of people said, Todd, that's, that's not good enough. And I said, you know what? You're right. You're right. When you're right, you're right. Because you go to these things, it's a new thing. It's like bring your own meat to a grill, right? And it's a party and you bring your stuff. And I thought, why not bring something you can share that's like really creepy? And then I got the idea for the octopus. Now, I thought to myself, these aren't skewers. These aren't meant for shish kebab. These are meant for shish kebabs. And those little tiny octopus that I had, were they ready and the, were they big enough? No. And that's why I bring you these. These octopi. Oh, 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 I'd like to do a little impression for you, which I don't usually do, but here you go. Captain Jack Sparrow. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, relax. So what I'm going to do is we're going to cook these two, the big ones, and we're going to show you how it works, and you can be the star of the party. I know half of you have left already when I did this. Okay, but um, the rest of you, this is going to be really cool. All right, all right, let's go. All right, this is pretty straightforward. Here are your eyes right here. This is the head. This is the body. These are the tentacles. The eyes are right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut there and for today's purposes uh, you can clean this all out and have that sorry just lost another 20 people uh, I'm gonna put that over here okay now what we have is we have all the tentacles now there is one more part of the animal that you do not want to eat and it is the beak the uh, I think this one has been de-beaked it has all right, so there we go. So now, when you lay this all out, you'll see what you have. Now, to cook this, let's do. Let's go right to it. To cook this, we're going to take a pan and we're going to put it in a pan. We're going to lay it out like this. And we're going to put a little olive oil in it, like this, and we're going to put. I'm going to make two of these, so I'm going to put a bay leaf in here. I'm going to put lemon juice like that. We're going to put some of the onions in. I'm going to put half the peppercorns in. Move those around. Uh, little parsley and parsley stalks. I'm going to put that in. Some oregano from here. All right, we're good to go. Now, what we're going to do is cook this until it's tender. And you take a sharp knife and you'll like touch it. And it has to give a little bit but still be tender enough. And we're going to put this on the stove for about 45 to 60 minutes. All right, let's get on the stove. The second octopus has been cut up and is in the pot. All the same ingredients that went into the first one go into this. 
Now, one thing you do, you put about two inches of water in here and put a heavy lid on top. And about, like I said, about 45 to 60 minutes, we're going to go back and check on it. All right, the octopus are cooling off, and this is the marinade actually going to brush on while it's on the grill. Lemon juice, olive oil, parsley, crushed garlic, a little bit of salt, and that's going to go on as we grill it. Here is, there they are. Now, they're cool to the touch, so one more thing we have to do, and this might gross some people out, <laughs> but what we're going to do is, we're going to take the skin off and as you see here we're going to put it in some water and we're going to take all the skin off so we have like that see you're going to have that nice pink goodness all right we'll be back because this is gross all right at the grill do the cool thing and put the octopus on Get that topping on there. Remember, it's already cooked. All we're going for is char. And that fire, my friends, will do it. So you imagine that it's like hamburger, hamburger, hot dog, hot dog. All right, there you go. Octopus on a stick. Things you can cook on a stick. This was episode because I kind of lost track, but there it is. Imagine that on the grill of your neighbor's barbecue. Uh, by the way, this is a good one to practice before you do that. All right, so enjoy another thing you can cook on a stick. The Todd and Aaron Daily Stream is brought to you by PC Laptops with desktops and laptops starting as low as $7.99 with a lifetime parts and service warranty. They fix phones too. Go to PCLaptops.com. Do you remember back, do you remember the first time you heard someone say, I met them online? And it was like, how? And you're like, how would this thing oh. happen? Was it on AOL? Was and it in you, a chat group? It was, and you're still alive? How did that happen? 40% of couples now meet online. 40%. 40%. 40%. I'm surprised actually it's not more. In today's society and how, how insular we are, how else do you meet people, especially if you're in a new place? Don't do it in Alaska. Why? Dangerous. Alaska is the most dangerous They have for rated, this? They've rated the, the, the top scariest places to do this hmm. online. Uh, number one, the safest places, no, number one is Vermont because they're laid back and they wear f breathable overwear uh number two sure. is west virginia that new, surprises me a lot i'm gonna be honest with you new hampshire maine and utah you new know, hampshire and maine you guys yeah it's back know, to that whole mellow upper you know northeast kind of thing no no actually in maine it's just like you're just so glad to have someone to talk to i'm so alone <laughs> i'm so alone is talk. this okay is this all right this is this great <laughs> You're kind of flashing back to your, your college memories. It was there. very cold winters, yes. Yeah, yes. I understand completely. So anyway, so... Well, that's actually really good news. I know. Least. So I'm full of lists tonight. I noticed that. I mean, today. This is... I'm just full of lists. So so the census thing is that that is the dating thing, which is great. Now, let's go to business. And I'm very proud to say this. Okay. West Valley City has been named number 15... In the latest study, Hispanic and Latino communities starting new businesses. So entrepreneurs and startups? That's exactly. really cool. Like 15th, like like supporting them and helping them get going. And Laredo, stuff. Texas, number one. El Paso, number nine. We've got Brownsville, Texas, number 13. A lot of Texas. West Valley City is creating businesses at 15 times the national rate for Hispanics. That's very cool. That is very cool. Congratulations. So there's Texas, Texas, Texas. Florida, West Virginia, Utah. Utah. 
There you Very go. Very nice. That what makes me proud. What a list tonight. Well, I have another one. Are you ready? Yeah. This well, one's you... actually really cool. You know that they've talked a lot about, especially with with broader, more comprehensive universities, that the, the student population is quite a bit older. It's not 18 to 22 anymore. It's It can take years upon years, and then there's a lot of people who go back and realize they need, need new things, especially right. now because the average person entering the workforce now will change careers at least eight times before they retire. Eight times. Eight times. You'll live in 11 different houses, too. Isn't that I just amazing? I'd throw that it's in a there. nice one. Well, this is what I love, though. Utah Valley University, who has been really cool, really progressive. I've liked them a lot. They just released their report. They're going to have 6,000 graduates this month from all of their different, their different schools, and I'm very wow. proud of them. And uh, it's pretty cool. Three of them who are receiving their diplomas are 69 years old. Three of them, not that one crazy story of that plucky, you know, octogenarian who's getting a degree. Three 69-year-olds are getting degrees. Really? Degree. One of them's in economics. I mean, one of them's in computer science. That's really cool. And an associate degree is awarded to a 16-year-old. So you've got both sides of the spectrum. That's crazy. Tell me that's not amazing. With I absolutely love this. Um, they've got 29 Utah counties, 48 states, and they have 41 other countries all graduating this year. From where? Which makes them really cool. Uh, 48 different states, 29 Utah counties here, Valley and University. 41 other countries. That's incredible. Yeah, Real I think, the, and the nicest thing, they brought this up, which I love, over 1,000 of the students will be the first college graduate in their families. Oh, that is very cool. And considering the fact that student tuition has gone up 22% in the last 10 years, I mean, that's a really cool thing. Plus, if you're in your 60s, the frat parties end at 830. Actually, at four thirty, because the early bird special at Golden Curve. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with that because if I'm 69, I'm like I can stay up all night because I don't sleep. I'm not no sleeping sleep. anyway. <laughs> I'm up here and I'm having I'm gonna drink the rest of you under the I, table. I have apnea. You think I'm kidding? <laughs> so I'm gonna stay up late. I don't agree with this. No, what what? Well, you know that they've had a lot of complaints recently about social media causing depression and anxiety, especially yeah. in teenagers, who might impact their self esteem because. They measure themselves so rigorously against right. peers, right? Right, right? Well, Instagram's running out a new test now where they're going to hide the total number of likes on photos and videos on Instagram, meaning that you can't go onto a friend's page and go, oh my gosh, that cute video had 400 and something, something views. That's lovely. Or, it won't hey, say that. my friend's got, yeah, none of that will be there. The person who owns the page can see it, but nobody else can. And they're, this is, it's like that dumb thing Tumblr did just recently, we won't discuss, but. They're saying, well, you know, we want that people, that your followers, to really focus on the quality of your videos and your photos instead of how many likes they've got. Okay. I like the fact that the grandma who saved the coyote and the coyote's licking her face, even if the coyote has rabies, uh, got four sense. million views. I, I, I kind of like seeing that. You know, they're... they're their Instagram people are going, well, you know, likes are often used as a metric of popularity. Yeah, that's true. So, and according to the studies, they say that Instagram is actually the most detrimental social networking app for young people's mental health. I didn't know that. I thought it would be, fa I thought it would either be Facebook or maybe Snapchat. That kind of surprises me. Yeah. But uh, they say that one of the things that's a problem, though, um, he, they said regardless of what you do with Instagram, they say there's always going to be people who measure themselves and feel inferior. You can't stop that. But here's something that actually impacts us. If you're a social influencer, you're screwed. Now, a social influencer, and this could be a lot of different people, if you've got a large amount of followers or you produce compelling and interesting content on a social media platform. Which is our goal down the road. Go ahead. Is you, you can actually get paid by different products and such to be a social media influencer. So if just you're into to be that position. Just to be popular, I meant, down the road. But... Yeah. But the point is, is that that just ended your career because no one's going to know how many views you had anyway. So to buy a social influencer, that just seems kind of like... Uh, That's really strange. It seems like it's a real big overkill, but I, I don't know. All right, what's this one? How, what? This is a big deal to me, and I know I'm a little bit prejudiced because we have a son with autism too, but this goes back to a really fundamental problem that they've been having in courts, especially if you're talking about two different states. And this is a Wisconsin mom. She was held for nine months in a Racine County jail because she refused to release her 10-year-old son to his father. She had actually managed to escape the marriage, had moved back to New Jersey, said... So hard, isn't it? He had abused me for all of these years. He had right. abused our son who has, you know, has autism. The, the autism. And she said she got the divorce and she filed all the domestic violence complaints that she didn't feel safe doing there. 
And so the, apparently the uh, Wisconsin um, court said, no, we don't believe you, so we don't care, even though the New Jersey court said, yeah, we're upholding this. This is the information and the evidence we see. We, we feel that this is strong. Right. So what happened is, is that, of course, the father um, said, immediately demanded custody, and he said, this is exactly what women do. Great quote, Dad. That's going to endear you to many people. And she said, I'll sit here as long as it takes to make sure that my son's never hurt again. So she was declared in contempt of court. They threw her into a jail. She had no attorney. Now, here's where it gets interesting. She had been in there for so long, and her son was saved back in New Jersey with his grandparents. She had been in there so long that... So they didn't turn the kid over to the dad? No. He was in New Jersey where they had ruled that it was right and that he could be kept away. But she was put in jail from... For know. contempt of court from Wisconsin where right. they didn't agree with it. Right. Well, here's the deal. There was finally a reporter who said, well, how long have you been in here? This is Sarah Shepard. And Sarah said, I've been in here nine months. And the reporter went, that can't be right. The reporter went back and researched it. The longest you can be held in jail for contempt of court is six months. So this woman had so sat there without done. representation and had stayed in jail right. three months longer than she should have because no one bothered to check on her. So she's out and she was released that afternoon. She's back with her son now. And so now we're back to the whole dilemma again of you've got two states fighting each other on what to do. But just the fact that that woman sat there for three months longer than even she should have possibly had yeah, to. Yeah, no, that's crazy. And nobody was there to help yeah. her was the part that kind of... And as far it's as the custody thing me. goes, it's not always the guy. No. That's all I'm going to say. No, no. Let's it's make not this, always the guy. Let's make this very clear. We both know, and right. I think almost everyone knows, and if you don't, you should know, that there can be incredibly emotionally and physically abusive parents on both sexes. It has nothing to do with the right. sex. But in this particular case, right. it was ruled as a compelling stand of evidence that there should not be custody. All right, so let's talk about airports. Now, your family had an interesting situation where they went and they were going to fly to Washington, D.C. I'm so sorry I'm throwing you under the bus on this Thank one. Thank you. And, uh, That's going to be a fun And so Sunday as opposed day. to calling us and asking us, hey, take us to the airport, they decided to solve no, all those hassles. They'll do themselves and go long-term parking, wait for the show, go there miss their flight. Miss their flight. Come back the next day, have to fly to New Jersey instead of Washington, D.C. and then take, take a, train a train down. down. That's going to be fun. Ah, I'm just so relaxed now. What a great vacation this is. The sad part is this is my family. This is Todd, Todd will refuse to pick anyone up at the airport who may be related to me because it always uh, goes wrong. She has one sister. Always. This has happened three times. We say, <laughs> okay, what time are you getting in? This is on Thanksgiving evening, 6.50. All right, 6.50. Someone disappears. They go to the airport. 6.50, and then they don't come back for three hours. Why, why didn't they come back for three hours? Because that was the time of her departure, was 6.50. Then my sister walks in and goes, is there any warm turkey? And it's, you know, midnight. We want to hurt her in a celebration kind of way. All right, way. moving past my, my family's traveling okay. disability, would you like to move on to what we're actually discussing? When you go here? to an airport, what, what, you know there's a couple things that are gonna happen. You're gonna get frisky, you're gonna drop your, your, your uh, belt off, you're gonna do all these things, but you know that you're going someplace, and you're like, and hopefully it's a great thing, not not like a you know family- Depressing thing. Depressing thing you're gonna do. Well, that, <laughs> they're solving that at the Tampa International Airport, the billion dollar makeover is done. Billion dollars, wow. Billion dollars, and they have put in 70 new restaurants, bars, shops, and spas. Nice, spas? Spas. I guess if you have a super long layover. People from the outside, non-flyers, want to eat at these restaurants. I don't blame them, I would too. They're fancy schmancy, evidently. There's, That's awesome. And so they had to work out something with the TSA. You have to give them like 48 hours notice to go. You oh, go that's through funny. security and they make sure you're not on the no fly list. <laughs> and you can go, 100 people a night can go in and have a go nice dinner. and experience the, the restaurants that they have. That's so Which funny. are all independent restaurants. There's, it's not like a Denny's, it's not like a McDonald's. They have all these upscale restaurants that you can go to and just go to the airport. I like that. And then you go home. Didn't you ever go to the airport when you were not flying out though for something? I went out with one friend and we used to just watch people say goodbye to each other. 
because we loved watching it. You know, people arriving or saying goodbye, and then we'd go in and we'd like kiss in front of one of the gates, like, goodbye, I love you, I'll miss you forever. So this is before cable. Yeah, probably. Right. We were, I, young. I just, I just think we were that, young and had no budget. I think that'd be like going and parking at Disneyland, staying by the front gate and just waving at people and not going in. They, they were just... And plus the fact when I Aaron and I... I do a lot I, for a good meal. The last time Aaron and I flew together, we stopped on the, on the layover and we stopped and we had a glass of wine each and it was $32. Yeah. And I remember saying to the lady, I go, is this correct? And she goes, it's the airport. Sorry, she apologized, which meant nothing. But, but she still took our money. Well, yeah, they do that. So there you go. I think that would be cool to do just on principle. We're going camping. Tasty. We're going camp. That's why I'm wearing plaid. Tomorrow we're going to do some more culinary camping hacks for you that are actually some really tasty things. All right, so we'll see you later tomorrow on the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. I'm going camping. I'm You're really going invested camping. in this. I'm going camping. I'm not going to sleep because the kids are going to keep us up all night. That would be the second chorus of this song. Okay, good. I'm so tired, but I'm, I'm so camping. Tired. I smell, but I'm camping.